It's all meaningless. This is the only thing that's real. To fight on behalf of my own life and nothing else. I've never felt so complete. <laughs> I guess you could say I finally arrived. Welcome back to Off the Cuff, my name's John Malasa, and today we're covering Wrath in our villain series. Remember, if you'd like to see a video on any specific villain, just let me know in the comments below. Wrath is easily the most skilled fighter out of the homunculi, and the most intimidating in the show. On top of looking like Joseph Stalin having Hitler's military title of Fuhrer, he's a hell of a swordsman and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. He beats greed over and over in combat. However, with the exception of Pride, I can't see any of the other homunculi landing even a scratch on this guy. Same with the humans, with the exception of Mustang. This is due to the fact that Wrath possesses what he calls his ultimate eye. This eye allows Wrath to read attack patterns and even anticipate the trajectory of bullets if he can see where they're being fired from. His sword skills and reflexes are advanced enough that he's nearly untouchable in combat. However, while Wrath is the most skilled and observant of his siblings, He's also got the worst regeneration. In fact, his body just seems to be far sturdier than a normal human's. In the show, he's not really shown with any particular regenerative powers. That being said, Wrath has his left eye gouged out, is shot, impaled, and has both of his arms blown off before going down. And even then, he took dozens of soldiers and a tank with him. He survived having train tracks blown out beneath his train, and multiple showdowns with greed. So Wrath definitely brings the fury, but how do they characterize the final and most rage-filled of the sins? You don't say. What a coincidence. I don't know my real name either. It's almost poetic. Two nameless men fighting to the death. The Fuhrer begins his journey as an unnamed child taken from his mother and father and has no memory of his original home. Adopted into a government program, the nameless boy was trained to cultivate the next leader of their country. Bred in the study of politics and combat, Wrath worked daily in hand-to-hand -hand combat, swordsmanship, and firearms. As a teenager, he even killed his classmates in mock combat. He was told that all of these other students' lives had meaning as they provided their bodies as a mean of honing his killer instincts. Wrath, standing at the pinnacle of his peers, is chosen by his government to undergo a Philosopher's Stone infusion. Now, this is a procedure when a Philosopher's Stone, a powerful alchemic substance made of human souls, is added to the subject's bloodstream. On top of this, the stone came from a homunculus, pouring all of his inclination towards Wrath into these souls injected into the target. Instantly, the nameless boy's body tried to reject the stone as his flesh was rended apart and reformed repeatedly. However, the boy, through force of will, survived. His body was transformed and he received his ultimate eye. Over decades, Wrath would come to distinguish himself on the battlefield, rising in the ranks. He was allowed to choose a wife and was assigned a surrogate son in the form of the homunculus Pride, going under the moniker of Selim Bradley. Wrath seems to legitimately enjoy his life with his wife, saying she was the only thing he ever chose. He even talks about her with his dying breath. This shows a duality in the character. The author hints at a potential home life and never really lets the audience know which one of the characters is where Wrath's heart truly lies. Is he too filled with rage to ever stay off the battlefield? This question is never answered. Regardless, Wrath, as an antagonist, is a powerful military figure. Wrath is the king of his land, and rules absolutely. He kills dissidents with his own sword, often carving rebels to pieces. However, Wrath can appear mellow and calm, but underneath, the audience is always given a sense of his bottled rage. He snaps from calm demeanor to violent combat in an instant, as if bloody conflict is his default setting. Wrath also demonstrates a want to conquer and control people. He often plays politics, using people's loved ones as hostages. He keeps his enemies close, and at a moment's notice is willing to shred them to nothing. At the very end of the series, he gets to go against the soldiers of Briggs, Fu, Greed, Buccaneer, and ultimately Scar. The whole time he seems perfectly calm, as if combat gives him a great sense of peace. With the same calm demeanor, he carves men into piles of limbs, kills two allies, and takes multiple mortal wounds without giving up his fight. 
It's only when he comes up against Scar, a warrior he considers in some way to be his equal, that he fights all out. Wrath, in a glorious fury, expresses his rage against God and religion, and his hatred of humans for being so weak as to need such intellectual crutches. Maimed and dismembered, Wrath refuses to go down, delivering a near-fatal blow to Scar with a piece of his sword gripped in his bare teeth. Falling, Wrath remains true to himself, a furious warrior to the very end, and he dies in combat with a smile on his face. Well, that's my off-the-cuff thoughts on Wrath, Please continue the conversation below, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all our content.